talk in, let's talk about something else that's really cool in Ruby, and that is ranges. Ranges are a method to specify an array or a range of numbers or characters. Let's show an example. If I wanted to quickly create an array of, let's say the numbers one through 10, instead of making an array with one comma two comma three, I could simply create a range and then assign that to become an array. And let me show you how to do that. So if I made a variable called array, I could simply assign it to a range, which you syntactically create by doing your first number, one, and then two periods, and then your ending number, 10. Now there are three ways to do, there are two ways, not three, sorry, to do a range. Now, the first way is as I showed above. And now that we have a range here, I can simply then print out, you know, array.class, and I can see that it is a range class. Now to turn this into an array, I would need to run the 2a method, which means to array. And then when I print out this array, I get the numbers one through 10. That is one way to declare a range. The other way is, is very easy and very simple, but there's a subtle detail that you should be aware of. These two periods mean inclusivity. What it means is that I include the numbers one through 10, including 10. If I add a third dot, which is the other way to make a range, a third period, guys, then I'm excluding the final number. So I'm only gonna have the numbers one through nine. And when I rerun this program, now I only get the numbers one through nine when I print out an array. That, you can also do this with characters, and I'll show you right here. I'll do Z, and I'll do A, and I'll make this inclusive, so I'll include Z, and now when I print this out, I actually get all the lowercase characters of the alphabet. And when you do something crazier, you'll notice it actually goes by Unicode. Unicode is how symbols are you know, defined inside the code. So now when I go to capital A to Z, I get all the uppercase letters and all the lowercase letters because that's where they are in Unicode. Note that if I go out of order, meaning if I did a number like five to one, it does not go downwards. It does not recognize that. And I would run that program. And now when I run it from five to one, I get nothing. It doesn't give me an error, but it does recognize, hey, there's nothing in the array. So the left side must be less than the right side. It must be going up ascending. You know, if I wanted to do something like that, I could do negative five to one, and then we did get what we wanted, okay? Now, if I wanted to create an arrange and turn it right into an array, I couldn't just do 2a, I would have to put parentheses around it so that it took into account the whole range. And then when I did that, it would already be an array. That's something you'll see common with ranges is parentheses around them so that then you can call methods on them because it won't recognize any other method. It won't recognize a range until it gets assigned. So you must put parentheses around them if you wanna call on it directly. Get it? I will end it with one thing. Ranges are really helpful in switch statements, which we went over earlier. Remember those guys? That's when you could simply use the keyword case. I'm gonna create a variable called num. You could create a case statement and then you could check for different scenarios without using a lot of if else statements. The reason because ranges are cool is that if you wanted to do a series of numbers, for instance, maybe a grading policy, 90 to 100, 80 to 90, you could use ranges. So I could simply check for a case of num, so take in that variable and then use the when statement to just check for a range. So I could do one to 65 is, you know, puts, you know, fail. And then when, you know, 90 to 100 puts perfect or whatever, you know, A. So that way when I run this program, I get false, or sorry, I, I get failure. So now I can easily check for ranges and I could put, you know, a case for B and a case for a C and things of that nature. Notice here, I'm gonna use inclusivity to include 90 so I only get to 89 so I don't include 90 because if I included 90 then this statement would run and it would not be an A. I want 90 to be an A. So just make sure you know your difference between inclusivity 
when you're including the last number and exclusivity when you're not including the last number. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Hey guys, I just started a new course on Thinkific that I have created that takes you through all the basics of Ruby programming. If you want to check it out, I have the link in description. It's completely free and you can ask questions on it and I will respond and I will be updating it as much as possible and also be adding Ruby on Rails. Thank you guys. Please check it out.